Hello, it's Dr. Henderson again. Today we're going to talk about earwax. I have a lot of patients as an ear, nose, and throat specialist of seeing lots of people, people referred for problems with earwax, mostly associated with hearing loss, uh, the wax blocking in the canals. I have a lot of older people who go to be evaluated for a hearing aid, and the hearing aid audiologist in person uh, find that they have earwax, so they send them to me to get the earwax out. And their question primarily is, you know, where am I getting all this earwax from? Well, earwax is a normal substance. It is like tears that help to protect the eyes. It is like the nasal mucus that we have in our mouths and our throats and our saliva uh, that helps protect our upper respiratory tract. Uh, it's like oil that does come under our skin sometimes. It helps protect the skin from being dried out and becoming irritated. So the wax is there for a purpose. I don't know exactly why we have earwax. Sometimes I like to think that the when we were sleeping on skins in caves, that the earwax acted sort of like fly paper. Maybe some of the younger people don't know what that is, but when I was growing up, there were a lot of flies around. We didn't have as many insecticides and things. And so we would hang up a strip of very sticky fly paper and flies would land on it and they were stuck. So maybe the ear canal wax is there to trap insects when we're sleeping in caves from crawling into the ear and damaging the eardrum or the external ear canal. Uh, I don't know that to be true. That's a guess on my part. I don't know of any other reasons why the wax is there, but I know it's there for a purpose. I just don't know what the purpose is exactly. Uh, maybe it is to act as a protectant. When we try to do things to clean the earwax, particularly if we're using Q-tips, we are basically staining a little bit of the wax on the end of the Q-tip and the rest of the wax is being pushed further down in the ear canal. Um, Q-tips make me a lot of money. I like them because people keep doing that. Even though we advise them not to do that, uh, don't use Q-tips in your ears, they still do. And we end up with uh, people who have not only packed in wax, but sometimes it gets infected and whatever. The main reason that wax collects is the fact that there's moisture in our ear from showering or swimming or washing the hair, the wax absorbs this water and swells up, bloats up, so that it becomes more of a volume and can act sometimes even like a pudding or something, which again, the water in the ear makes the ear more susceptible to any kind of infection, and this is where we get swimmer's ear infections from. The main way to help prevent earwax accumulation is to dry the ears after exposure to water. Several ways to do this. One of the, probably the most efficient, is just taking a hair blower and blowing it at your ear for maybe 30 or 40 seconds to blow the water out. Certainly you don't want to get close enough to burn it, you don't want it turned up to a high temperature at a lower temperature setting, but you hold it and blow it just like you blow your hair. Your hair doesn't get dry in two or three minutes, it takes longer than that, but for your ear, a minute or so, or 45 to 60 seconds would uh, on each ear would have to dry the ear. When, this, when the earwax is dry, the skin in the ear canal grows in a certain direction. From the middle of the ear bow, of the eardrum, called the umbo, the, the skin grows in a spiral fashion around and it carries out the external ear canal and if the earwax is dried out by then, we will reach up, we will feel something reach up there and there's a little plug of wax. So people will say, well, how do I clean my ears? If they do get maxed up or whatever, uh, I have to suggest that uh, possibly uh, since your ear canal is, is small, it's protecting a very delicate hearing system. And mainly uh, it's to keep us from doing things to the ear which would damage it. And sometimes I remind people that maybe if, the, if we were supposed to clean our ears, our ear hole would be as big as our nose hole and then we could pick it. That doesn't seem too effective, and maybe that's why the ear canal is smaller, to keep our fingers out of it. And again, this would suggest that we should keep the Q-tips and things out of it. So when the earwax is in there, uh, the things that we do may aggravate it, make it worse, or we need to do some other things uh, to stop the accumulation from recurring, mainly by drying the ears. So earwax doesn't have to be a problem we can do things to decrease the accumulation of wax, but it is going to accumulate every now and then. And with people who wear hearing aids, because the earpiece of the hearing aid does go down to the ear canal, a lot of times they will, earpiece of the hearing aid goes into the canal and, and does push some of the wax in. 
And so this is why people with hearing aids probably need to get their ears cleaned out if their hearing aid starts whistling a lot even after they put it in. Now, you people who have hearing aids, you know what I'm talking about when you put the hearing aid in your ear, it whistles a lot. If it still whistles after you get it seated properly by adjusting your ear and the hearing aid itself, if it's still whistling, making noise, it's because there's getting feedback from the wax that's just right in front of the earpiece, and that's what's making the hearing aid whistle. So if that's happening, it's one of the signs that you need to get the wax cleaned out of your ears. So drying the ears, primarily with a hair dryer, works well and can be used. People who swim a lot, I suggest that they use a solution of alcohol and vinegar. Uh, as you know, water can hang on the side of a sink without ever coming down and it can hang in your ear. This is called because of surface tension. So what alcohol does, it breaks the surface tension of the water, and when you put the alcohol and vinegar solution in there, it breaks the surface tension of the water, and then you can you screw your ear like this, and you turn over, and then you wipe it off, and then the alcohol will evaporate, and it helps to dry the air. The uh, vinegar is in there to act as a bactericidal or depressor agent to keep the bacteria from growing, and thereby not causing uh, external ear infections or external otitis. So a few little things that we can do to reduce some of the aggravations that we have in everyday life. Uh, and it's very simple. Uh, you dry your ears after exposure to water. And if the wax gets accumulated for whatever other reason, then go in to have somebody to remove it. And it's probably most easily and, and, and correctly done by those of us who have a lot of experience with this, we use sometimes microscopes to magnify things so we can very, be very delicate because the ear canal is exquisitely sensitive. So I hope you can use this information and use it to decrease some of your problems.